Hi, welcome to the Yale University Art Gallery in New Haven, Connecticut. Come on in and have a seat. This is Stories in Art. Please feel free to pause the video whenever you'd like to get a closer look at the artwork. Enjoy! Hi, my name is Candace. Today I will be telling a story called The Heron Returns a Favor, based on the folktale collected by Yanagita Kunio and translated by Fanny Hagen Mayer. We will be using this story to look closely at two works of art that have herons in them. A heron is a type of large white bird with a long beak that usually lives near the water. The first one is called White Heron and Willow Tree. It's a print in the style of the Japanese artist Isoda Koryusai. What do you notice about where the bird is? It looks to me like it's standing on a tree trunk. I notice that the artist has made the bird stand on one leg. What colors do you see? What season do you think the artist is showing? I think it might be winter because I notice snowflakes falling in the background and snow resting on the tree trunk and branches. This one is called Heron Maiden by the Japanese artist Sukiyoka Yoshitoshi. This print depicts a male performer dressed for a dance called Sagi Muzume, which translates to the Heron Maiden. What do you notice about the person in the print? I notice that the maiden is wearing a kimono with many layers and a belt called an obi sash and holding an umbrella. Do you see the birds in this picture? I notice three of them one on her side and two up near the maiden's arm. Now, as I tell you this story, keep looking at the prints to see what else you notice about them. Once upon a time, on a cold winter morning, a woodcutter was walking in the woods. As he was admiring the beautiful white snow on the trees, he felt warm because of his heavy coat, but his stomach was rumbling. And he said to himself, if I don't sell enough wood at the market, I won't be able to buy food. Suddenly he heard a noise in the distance. As he came closer, he saw a heron, like the one here, sitting on a tree branch with a broken wing. The heron was shivering in the cold, so the man said, let me help you. He opened his coat and tucked it inside to keep warm as he headed home. He cared for the heron and shared what little food he had until its wing healed. After a few days, the heron's wing was much better, and one cold morning, it flew away. That night, the woodcutter heard a knock on the door. When he opened the door, he saw a tall woman in a long, flowing white kimono, like the one here in this print. She introduced herself and said, I'm a weaver traveling to the market. If I make a cloth for you to sell, will you let me stay in your house? The woodcutter agreed and let the woman set up her weaving in the back room. The woman warned the woodcutter that he was not allowed to watch her weave. He had to stay out of the room and not look until the cloth was finished. A few days later, the woman emerged from the room with a beautiful white cloth. It was fine and soft like a pile of feathers. When the man took it to the market, everyone crowded around to admire the lovely fabric. He sold it and was able to save plenty of money. He would never have to go hungry again. Arriving home, the woodcutter said to the weaver, thank you so much for your help. Because of you, I was able to buy food and I won't have to go hungry anymore. He offered to let her stay and she continued her weaving in the back room. But that night, the woodcutter was so curious that he couldn't resist looking into the room. When he peeked through the door, the woman was gone. Instead of the woman, he saw a heron pulling out its feathers and weaving them into the cloth. The heron maiden, realizing that she had been discovered, said to the man, You're not supposed to watch me weave, reminding the man of her warning. Now I have to go. Suddenly, he realized that she was the same heron he had saved and nursed back to health. She had come back to quietly repay him for his help. But now that he had recognized her, she had to leave. She flew away into the snowy night, leaving the last of her feathers in the cloth. The woodcutter was grateful for the heron's help. And from then on, 
He was always willing to share what he had with anyone who needed it. The end. The story of the Heron Maiden is also sometimes shown through dance, where an actor dresses up like the Heron Maiden and performs a dance. Think about the clothes you would wear to dance like a heron. What kind of movements would you make? If you could turn into any animal, which animal would you choose? How would you dance as this animal? Give it a try. Thank you for joining us for Stories in Art at the Yale University Art Gallery. We hope you enjoyed listening and looking with our storyteller.